It's 8 p.m. and here are our top stories in 90 seconds. If nothing changes, then I think it will probably continue to be on the rise. Breaking right now, a cyber attack has shut down all JBS beef plants in the U.S., including its headquarters in Greeley. Potentially, we could see uh, like an increase in the price of, of meat. So what does this mean for Colorado's third largest employer? And who does the government think is behind this? We have in-depth coverage. It does not mean that they're not in the database. <laughs> um, so a lot of data elements have to match exactly 100%. The state is clearing up some confusion about its COVID vaccine lottery. Out of those thousands of people that we've heard from, 99% of the people have been in the system. Plus, a new law in our state is helping undocumented Coloradans attain professional licenses. It's such an important step for our immigrant community here in Colorado. And for those being impacted, this new bill is life changing. You know, it's not just the paper, it's, it's, it's people's lives. People have been working for this. And as our state rebounds from devastating wildfires last year, there are new problems arising every day. The source water that will be coming to us in the spring runoff will be somewhere between three and four times the sediment loading that we're normally used to. Good Tuesday evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. Breaking right now, the union representing workers at the JBS meatpacking plant in Greeley says one of two shifts will return to work tomorrow. All JBS beef plants shut down today because of a cyber attack on Sunday. There are eight beef plants nationwide, including the JBS plant in Greeley. Two shifts were canceled at the plant today. And to give you some perspective, JBS is the third largest employer in Colorado. It is also one of, if not the largest meatpacking company in the world. JBS has more than 100 brands, including Pilgrim's Pride. So with that much impact on our nation's meat supply, we could see a rise in the price of meat. It depends on how long it takes to recover and how much they end up losing. If they refuse to pay the ransom, it could take as much as, uh, I don't know, a week or two to get everything up and running again. Again, I don't know specifics, but it could take a while. Uh, and then down the line, it's potentially we could see uh, like an increase in the price of, of meat. The union representing workers says it will ensure all plant employees receive proper pay in the wake of the attack. JBS says they are making significant progress to get systems back up and running. Their CEO says, quote, our systems are coming back online and we are not sparing any resources to fight this threat. We have cybersecurity plans in place to address these types of issues and we are successfully executing those plans. This ransomware attack is so important because it is the second one to happen in our country in just the last few weeks. Back in early May, there was a cyber attack at Colonial Pipeline in Georgia. That one caused gas prices to skyrocket across the southeast. Colonial Pipeline CEO will answer to Congress on June 8th. So who does the government think is behind these attacks? The White House addressed the attack today and said the attack is likely from a criminal organization based in Russia. The White House is directly dealing with the Russian government on the matter. President Biden has directed his staff to determine how to mitigate the impact on our nation's meat supply. This is just the latest issue facing the JBS meatpacking plant in Greeley. Last year, the plant had to briefly close as it became the state's largest COVID outbreak site. There were even allegations they weren't keeping their employees safe. Denver 7 Investigates looked into those allegations. You can find our reporting on Denver 7 Plus. By midnight tonight, your COVID vaccine records need to be in the state system to be in the first drawing to win a million dollars. The state will pick the winner tomorrow, and that person will be announced on Friday. But there are still people contacting Denver 7 saying they are not in the database. Denver 7's Liz Gillardi took their concerns straight to the state's Department of Health. Time is running out before the big drawing. All right, now for your winning Powerball number. No, not that one. We're talking about the state's vaccine lottery, also known as Colorado Comeback Cash. That's right. You could win $1 million and you might already be entered. Anybody who got the vaccine in Colorado or who gets the vaccine will be an automatic participant. You need to be in the state's database by midnight to be eligible. Consider it your shot or ticket to winning $1 million. I believe in vaccines. They work. But you also like $1 million. 
Of course. Carl Bowles, his wife and two kids are all vaccinated, but he reached out to us after he couldn't find any of their records online. It's always nice to have a chance. You don't get a chance if you don't play. CDPHE says they're hearing from thousands of people who can't find their records online, but wanted to offer this reassurance. It does not mean that they're not in the database. <laughs> um, so a lot of data elements have to match exactly 100% to be able to find your own record through that portal. It has to be exact. So if I type in Liz instead of Elizabeth, my full name, my record probably won't show up. On top of that, some providers aren't submitting cell phone numbers or email addresses. So again, if you type that in, your record might not show up. That's right, you could win $1 million and you might already be entered. And if you can't find your information, don't panic. Chances are you're probably entered. But Carl right. wants to make sure because right. he's already making plans for that million dollar prize. Well, my kids are still going to college, so that'd probably take up a good chunk. Maybe go to Hawaii for a vacation, I don't know. Liz Gilardi, Denver 7. Liz, thank you. Now let's go more in depth on how exactly tomorrow will work. CDPHE is going to pull all eligible people from the state's database and randomly assign them a number. Numbers will then go into a program which will randomly select the winner and a few alternates just in case the winner is unable to claim the prize. That first winner will be announced this Friday at 5 p.m. Again, you must be a resident of Colorado to be eligible for the million dollars. Also, only those 18 and older can win. Plus, the rules state that you have to agree to possibly go public if you win. If not, that prize could be passed on to the alternate pick. Daily vaccine numbers nearly doubled since the governor announced the program last week. That trend slowed down a bit over the long weekend, but today numbers are right back up again. Today, nearly 9,000 Coloradans received at least one dose. That's up from about 4,000 or so we were seeing before the incentive was announced. A new law now in effect is paving a brighter future for immigrants living in Colorado. Senate Bill 77 will allow all Coloradans, despite their legal status, to pursue a professional career. Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo spoke with undocumented students who clung on to hope for a bill like this. It's official. Congratulations. With the stroke of a pen, Senate Bill 77 was signed into law, changing the lives of undocumented students seeking a higher education. It's such an important step for our immigrant community here in Colorado. Marissa Molina, the Colorado State Director for Forward U.S., shared the news with countless students who feared a future of uncertainty after spending years in college. Senate Bill 77 basically means all Coloradans, regardless of their immigration status, can now obtain a professional license in childcare, education, nursing, and many more professional fields, something previously out of their reach, unless they could prove legal status. Before the passage of this bill, folks, even folks with DACA or TPS, folks who have a protection within the United States, but not necessarily a legal status, they were also barred from accessing all of these professions. The new law will help diversify the job pool and fill positions in high demand. It's not just the paper, it's, it's, it's people's lives. People have been working for this. Montserrat Arritza testified for the bill. She's a senior at Metropolitan State University of Denver, where she's pursuing a career in education. To be able to work with uh, children with autism, especially bilingual children. When she enrolled in college as a DACA recipient, she didn't know if she would be able to pursue a career she dreamed of. It was scary, um, and uh, I was discouraged many times. A stress many undocumented students face. I went to school like not knowing what was going to happen. Duvia Ortega fought for Senate Bill 77. She moved to the U.S. a decade ago from Mexico. Chasing the American dream, she applied and was accepted at MSU. I really wanted to be a teacher. This has been my dream since I was a little girl. Her dream will become a reality in 2022. It just makes me really happy and excited and thrilled to have a license to be able to do something in life. Aritza will graduate in December of 2021. I'm going to be able to, you know, work with the children that I want to work with in the community, help my community, which is the Spanish speaking immigrants. For these women, it's about giving back to their community and connecting with students that look like them and share the same culture. Role models for future generations showcasing that dreams do come true. Addie Guardo, Denver 7.
we're just keep bringing everything in. We're gonna try to keep as much of it as possible, depending on condition. The fence and memorial outside the Boulder King Supers is starting to come down, but that's only to make way for a permanent memorial. We have details on how the city plans to heal. 60s and 70s for highs today. Now that we've seen the sunshine, it's helping warm up those temperatures, but it's about to get a lot hotter. I'll let you know just how warm coming up. And as temperatures get hotter, the fire risk rises. After a devastating season last year, our water supply could be impacted next. It's a significant change because right now we have amazing water. 